On today's show, we talk about getting involved in the community and how you can make a difference. It's all coming up right now on the Helping Hands podcast. Hey, everybody, it's Dan Ratkowicz, and this is episode 11 of the Helping Hands podcast. Uh, if this is the first time that you're joining us, the Helping Hands podcast is a podcast where we spotlight people doing great things in our community. And my guest today um, does so much for our community. Uh, a couple months ago, she won the Town of Hempstead Make a Difference Award. And any time that there is some sort of outreach where somebody needs something in our community that's near and dear to her heart, she jumps on it and follows through with it and takes care of it. And I want to welcome Eileen Napolitano to the podcast. Welcome, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. I'm excited that you're here. Um, can for everybody, anybody out there that doesn't mm -hmm. know who you are, can you give your origin story, a little background of, of uh, who you are? Yeah, and sure. So I'm Eileen Napolitano. Um, my family and I moved here Back in 1999, um, I had been looking all over Nassau County and uh, actually stumbled upon East Meadow by mistake. And I tell the story often. And I went home and I said to my husband, I know where we're going to live. So we've been here. Uh, it's going to be 20 years. Um, we have uh, great relationships with our neighbors. And um, in the school system, I became PTA president. And uh, throughout the other schools, wore a couple of other hats um, currently a school board trustee, okay. um, also um, a member of the Heroin Task Force, and I also sit on the Commissioner's Community Council. Outstanding. Outstanding. Busy, busy, busy person. Busy, yes. Busy person. Uh, I know one of the other things that is very near and dear to your heart mm -hmm. is our veterans. Yes. And you've been very active in the Veterans Mart that's over at the Nassau University Medical Center. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the Veterans Mart is and what you're doing over there. Yes, over uh, them. that's really perfect timing because I had it on my list of items that uh, I, I wanted to really highlight. Um, first of all, we, we have a family in our community that wishes to rename, uh, remain anonymous. Um, and often, every other week, a um, couple times a month, they'll reach out and tell me that they've got really big donations. So the Vet Mart um, is actually a place where local veterans can go and they can get uh, food items. They can get toiletries. We provide them with uh, services and transportation. Uh, it's located at NUMC, right behind NUMC, and they are open Monday through Friday from 9 to 12. We were actually there this morning, so I'm going to turn to all of you. Um, and we brought a, some muffins and some produce and some uh, bagels and jelly and cereal and we brought a lot of stuff. But they did ask f that uh, they need some specific items. They need toilet paper, shampoo, soap, and they always can use coffee. So if you're willing to donate, um, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to pick them up. Um, or you can drop them off yourself. Uh, they'll be happy to see you. And, and obviously, I you know, veterans you know are, are there for us. They are the reason why we have our freedom and, yes. and our way of life. Is there any anything any other connection that that you're so passionate about? Our, our yes. Veterans? As a matter of fact, uh, I've been working with the veterans at our American Legion Hall, 1082 on Belmore Road, um, and these are fantastic guys. I really have to say, they've become so dear to me, and uh, they kid around and say I'm an honorary member. Um, and what we have to look forward to in the not too distant future. Um, because of all the work that we've been able to get accomplished through veteran services, through fundraising, through some county money, uh, we want to kind of showcase and show everyone what we've done. So uh, please look forward to a community event uh, where we're going to welcome you all in uh, to see the, the interior and all the work that's uh, being done. Uh, currently, we have... Uh, the Plumbers Union is donating their services to fine-tune some plumbing work that needs to be done. Uh, I want to thank uh, 
County Legislator uh, Abrahams because he is providing funds for a new roof and a new stove and some other items. And then really we should be in in good shape. Um, they are having parties. So they are able to now uh, start generating revenue on their own, which was always their goal. Um, there are two items on my personal wish list for them that I'm going to be working on, and that's new folding chairs and new tables. Their chairs are really dilapidated and they're falling apart. And they really could use some folding chairs, which will be much more space-friendly. And uh, while we're at it, we're, we're going to get them some new tables also. And and tell everybody why an American Legion Hall is so important in in the community. Why why this place? I mean, it's it's a place that that veterans can go. They can they can congregate. Yes. They can they can talk with each other. And There's a lot of good things that come out of that hall. Um, specifically, they have meetings once a week, uh, and they welcome uh, veterans from uh, all of the agencies. So you don't have to be a, a World War II vet or a Vietnam vet or um, even any of the women. They welcome everyone, and they're just so wonderful. And I'll tell you, one thing that they do that I really love is they sponsor their own food drive, and they do it a couple of times a year to bring to the Vet Mart. In addition, they also go out and volunteer at the Veterans Clinic. So they really do give back. Um, and you know what? It's important. We've got the members there, and, and they're, they're elderly. They're getting up in age. But, you know, we have a source of military in our own community. So I'm really hoping if anyone's listening, please go down. They're a great bunch of guys. You'll have a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. We need to keep this going um, for a couple of reasons to respect our, our history and the sacrifices that they made for us. Um, we need to keep this going for them, and we will. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So so come on down and, and support. Um, one of the other things that you're, you're working on right now um, is the uh, Workman Circle Beautification yes. Pro- Project yes. here in East Meadow. Yes. What is Workman Circle? Workman Circle is an organization that um, hosts – different religious education programs. Okay. However, uh, Stacy Davis, who actually is running the program, um, really wants to open this up to all of the youth in the community, and it's really a fabulous idea. Um, and it started with uh, a um, an event, um, and I think it's the, the tree. I'm not Jewish, so I'm not familiar, and I can't remember what it's called. Um, but the idea was to have something perpetuating and continually growing. Okay. And so together we kind of came up with this great idea of having baskets put on the lampposts on East Meadow Avenue. That would be beautiful. The, and they're beautiful. And, and I'll make sure that I send you a picture of kind of what we're looking to do. The flowers um, will be changed seasonally, so four times a year. And one of the things that Stacy's really passionate about is having messages of positivity, um, unity, uh, tolerance, um, and, you know, like American flags. Uh, so she's going to be running a project, um, and I believe she's going to be having some events, uh, meetings at the library, and I'll, I'll get you the date as soon as she secures that. And again, it's it's open to the public. What we're hoping is is that we're going to have um, businesses in the community, um, people in the community that will partner with the children, because we really want this to be their event, mm-hmm. um, that, that they do the work on potting the plants and securing some funding. Um, so I think that that's, you know, you and I often talk about the great things that we have in the community and to have an initiative like this that engages our youth yeah. in a positive way, it keeps them busy, it just shines such a great light on us. And it's something that they can drive down the street and see that they did that and they help yes. make it a better place and, and they can actually do that. That's 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 terrific. Yeah, that's terrific. It's, it's a feel-good thing for everyone. Yeah. And and just even just people just driving down the street mm-hmm. will uh, will be nice. I'm I'm looking forward to that. That would that, yes. that would be that would be great. Tell me about the Make a Difference Award with the Town of Hempstead. How did how did that oh. how did that come about? I was nominated by a couple of different people, and I I don't think I know everyone who nominated me. I think some were 
people that I didn't know. Um, and it was a very nice um, acknowledgement, although I, I'm i not here for acknowledgement. I really um, am very passionate about our community and, and getting things done. And, you know, if, if I'm the first one in line, it just means that I'm the first one in line. That's right. all it means. Right. So it was a very nice acknowledgement, and it, it really it meant a lot to me. All right. Very modest. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> we, we appreciate everything that, that, you. that, you're, that you're doing. Um, what, are, what are some of the other things that you're, you're working on right now, some of the other, other items that you want to you wanna, you wanna start wor- mm-hmm. or work that you're in the, working on right now? How much time do we have? <laughs> we got all the time so, in the world. One of the things that um, – and I, I attend a lot of different uh, – meetings and events. And so I'm exposed to a lot of various different programs that are available. And uh, there's something that really caught my eye, and I'm, I'm kind of championing it, and I really want to get this integrated into the community for uh, children that might have an interest in law enforcement. And it's the Nassau County Police Department Explorer Program. And I have to tell you, uh, I was at a presentation two weeks ago, and I was thoroughly impressed with the dedication um, of these of these kids and really I mean you you think I'm passionate these kids blow me away uh, so there's a couple of things that kids have to do to meet the criteria uh, they have to be between the ages of 14 and 20 they have to be in good academic standing they have to have parental consult uh, they have to be in good physical condition and they have to have a clean record. Okay. Of course. Well, it's the police department. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, any kid that has an interest in uh, the police department, but that also, uh, you know, includes cybersecurity. I mean, Homeland, you know, if you're thinking about being in the FBI or the CIA, this is a great stepping stone. In addition, they award some amazing scholarships to these kids. Uh, they meet – Twice a month. Okay. Uh, you, you are required to be at every meeting unless uh, schoolwork interferes, and then uh, you get a pass. Um, but the police officer that uh, runs this, I believe it's police officer Johansson, um, he said, we listen, we run a, a strict program. Some of the things that they really emphasize is leadership and citizenship. So they do a tremendous amount of community service. Uh, and you know what? It's just, it's keeping kids um, on a track of positive, you know, being a good citizen and uh, and respect. And, you know, I think that it's something, you know, that we can pay attention to. You know, when we give kids an opportunity to rise to an expectation, they often rise. But if we give them nothing, they have nothing to aspire to. And we as the adults, we, we kind of have to, you know, present these things to them because they don't know about them. So hopefully you'll be hearing a lot more about this um, through various organizations. And, you know, let's see if we've got a couple of kids that, you know, may be interested in this and go on and be commissioners like – Pat Ryder, it's yeah. amazing, and 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 what what great experience. I mean, what uh, what else? You know, what other opportunity for a, like a fourteen, fifteen, sixteen year old mm-hmm. are, are out there, and and you can be doing you know some other menial job, but you can also be involved in this program if it, if that's you know what you want to do, or even if it's not, that's that's right. great, empowering, yeah. and, and it's empowering. Yes, I love it. I love it. What else you're working on? What else you got going on? Oh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, Right now, I think these are my three really topics, um, the veterans, uh, the workman circle, and we'll see what happens in the summer. Um, there's another, you know, something that I'm, I kind of have on the back burner that I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this to actually get this uh, to fruition. Um, so it would be something along the lines of the Explore program. Um, and I've spoken to a lot of uh, amazing people that we have in our community that uh, are, you know, said, listen, you, you figure out how you can navigate this and we're on board. Uh, you know, I think that 
we just don't offer enough opportunity for children to be exposed to different things in our community. And I would love to have um, some kind of youth organization. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different factors that we can, you know, kind of uh, customize it to. We can, um, you know, kids that maybe have gotten into trouble, you know, we can we can turn them around. I think we're very fortunate in our community that we don't see a lot of um, youth crime. However, you know, we, we do have things. I've had my fence broken, and, you know, we had the spray painting issue a couple of years ago. Yeah. And kids are dumb. They, you know, they, they do silly things. We've all done silly things. But let's give them an opportunity to turn themselves around. And even for kids that are maybe looking for, listen, I want to do something. I want to start something. Let's give them a platform for them to empower themselves mm. and, and create their own destiny. And and especially because I mean, if if somebody's doing something as a teenager, you're talking about like are you like teenage years, yeah, something yeah. like that. I mean, it, you don't know as a seventeen year old how long life is going to be. You don't right. know that when you're forty years old, it's going to be like when you were eighteen years old, and you're right. going to feel like you know you were when you were twenty, and you're going to be there in fifty, and you can turn your life around and right. and to have someone make a mistake as a you know. Yes. Immature person yep. at 17 years old or, or 16 or whatever, mm -hmm. and then just people give up on you at that point. There's so much more that they can do. I've, I've, I've seen some instances where, you know, people have made big mistakes and been able to turn everything mm -hmm. around at that point and, and be able to contribute and give back to the community. So I think all those youth programs are, are amazing or they're, they're great. Um, you know, so many times now, I, I think the younger – kids get a little bit of flack and i think that some mm -hmm. pe sometimes people don't under understand i think that they have tremendous um potential they but like you said they need a little guidance they need yeah. encouragement they need the right programs and and they can they're gonna they're gonna do amazing things and that that's terrific that's terrific yeah i agree and i think that uh you know when we see people fall um we see them get up and we see them get up really strong and they often turn out to be leaders in their own right. And, you know, we really have, I believe, a very unique uh, situation in our community because I don't see it in a lot of, of other communities. I put a call out today on Facebook for some toiletries, and my good friend Janet Goldstein was at my house in an hour with three bags from Target. I already have messages, um, you know, to pick things up from other people. When a, a 911 call goes out to the community, whether it's uh, for the Christmas party that we helped coordinate for some of our military families, I mean, we don't come out a little bit. <laughs> like, we come out a lot. Like, there's enough food and there's enough presents and there's enough of everything to go around. And I really have to applaud our community, and I say it often, and I mean it from my heart. I'm so proud of who we are as a community and and as neighbors. And, you know, listen, we're not perfect. You know, we're going to have somebody having a bad day. Somebody went through a stop sign, whatever. But <laughs> the general purpose, because that was on Facebook. Uh, but for the general purposes, I really see people – um, that I don't even know, reach out to me and say, how can I help? How can I help? And it's just, it is amazing. Oh, there's actually one other thing I, I you know, I'm like a dog with a bone. I, I don't <laughs> give it up easily. So I know everyone has really, you know, seen my posts about the property over by Models. Right. Well, this is something I'm not going to give up on. And I've been speaking with Ken Breslin. He's the owner of the property, and he's really great. He's been really good in uh, communicating and dialoguing with me. And I have reached out again to two organizations, uh, the Christmas Tree Shop, once again, yeah. um, and Home Sense, because the way that uh, Ken described it to me, there's really enough retail space for two stores. Um, and, you know, we have... Uh, that in that shopping center, we've got Garden Social, which I consider a really more upscale, yeah. you know, restaurant. And so I reached out and I s sent them a bunch of information and uh, Ken is following up. And so don't 
give up on me yet <laughs> <clears throat> because I will get some really good retail. And I think, you know, we need that. We've we've got some great businesses here, but when we see empty stores, it's not good. It's mm-hmm. not good for our community. It's not good for our co- economy. So uh, two stores like that would really bring neighboring communities into our backyard and, you know, go for pizza and, you know, go shop around and, and shop in the stores around here. Yeah. So. And, and help the, help the local, local businesses. And, shop and local. Really. And what, what better? I mean, <clears throat> East Meadow. I mean, we're between the Wanto Parkway. We're yes. between the mm. Meadowbrook Parkway. Mm-hmm. It's, it, I mean, we're, I mean, and that, you know, you talk about you moved to East Meadow. That was originally why my family mm-hmm. moved here about the same time uh, that I think that you did. Um, and uh, and that, that's why we chose East Meadow is because it was right in the middle of everything. It's easy to jump on the mm-hmm. parkway and go, and same thing for other businesses. And I think with the addition of the places like – Stu Leonard's and, yes. and all the you know the the the, um, the uh, garden socials are definitely an upscale yeah. place, but you know especially Stu Leonard's it it, it really brings you know it it makes it easy to come yeah. and 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 have people uh, shop here. And I've actually used that um, in a lot of my correspondence because if Stu Leonard's felt that East Meadow was the right place, they did their homework. Yeah. And if you've been in Stu Leonard's, it's always busy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. always busy. Yeah, and those apple cider. I was going to say that, I but can't, <laughs> me get, can, can talk, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. Um, I think you should add property management to your uh, to your, your 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 business card because you'll you're, you're helping helping them out and helping the community out out also. Um, one of the things that you, you you said a little while ago is about how people reach out. You put a call out, and people. Yeah. So my question is, what what about the people that want to help? That that maybe they don't have you know something that they're attached to. They're not attached to a mm-hmm. charity. They don't have anything particular that um, that they they know of yet, but they want to get involved somehow. What are what are some ways that they can they can help? They can help. They can get involved. You know, there's always something uh, for someone to do. Um, what is the expression? Idle hands, idle minds. Yeah, something, something like, like that. Yeah. Um, listen, there are a ton of things that you can do. Uh, one of the first things you can do is, you know, if if you don't see something on social media, and unfortunately, it's really a way for us to communicate. It's generated great results, so it's an avenue that I use often. Um, get involved in your local schools. Join the PTA. Um, you know, I was PTA president of Barnum Woods. Uh, Woodland Middle School, and I was vice president of East Middle High School for four years. And, you know, we see those numbers dwindling, and we need to we need to keep those programs up and running because we live in a fantastic school district, um, but we need the support. So, you know, if you, if you don't know where to go, um, start there. Start something local. Uh, you know, the Vet Mart, they always look for volunteers. Um, and I'm actually hoping, I'm hoping that we can develop a program where we can actually have an outreach to veterans that can't necessarily get into the vet mart. So, you know, we may need drivers. We may need somebody to, uh, you know, do do home visits. Um, but there's something for everyone. And it, and I'll tell you something even more than that. If you're driving around your community and you see something or you think of something and you think, wow, you know, I think that that deserves some attention. Reach out, you know, talk to your neighbors. Somebody's going to be able to direct you, you know, in the, in the right direction. Um, Use social media, you know, hey, I'm seeing this going on in our community. Somebody actually posted about um, some mattresses over uh, by the Home Home Depot. Depot, And uh, we were able to get that taken care of with the help of Mr. Breslin. You know, for some of the things that I hear, like complaints out, out there, potholes, um, yeah. the mattresses, the, you know, garbage and, and, and the different empty places, <laughs> um, where, can, where, can people, what, what are, where can people go to find out what to do about that? I mean, I know there's different, yeah. like, community meetings, like the town of Hempstead has different meetings, yes. and yes. there's SEMCO, which is another yes. thing, and there's other yeah. things. So if, if it's something where it's like a town mm-hmm. issue... Or right. if it's something where, you know, like graffiti, like I, yeah. you know, there's graffiti here, 
there's potholes here, my recycle bin got stolen or destroyed or something like that. How are instead of people just complaining that this is happening? Right. What is there a place with within the town that they can they can yeah. go or they? The town of Hempstead actually just redid their website, and I was at their meeting. I think it was three weeks ago. So potholes is a really big topic. Uh, my husband and I were driving on the Southern State, and you know it's you know you're playing Mario Kart there. It's yeah. it's it's silly, um, but the one thing I would say is. Go on the Town of Hepstead website because you'll be able to determine if it's a town road. And if it's not listed as a town road, then you know it's a county road. I think that's the big confusion. It's it, is like, a, it is a confusion, it's like yeah. It's a, this, is, this is the town. This is the, right. this exactly. is the county. That's a state exactly. road. Exactly. I, I would say the Town of Hepstead website is much more user-friendly. Um, and actually to the point that I would encourage people – if there's a pothole, and somebody actually posted something not too long ago, you can actually uh, submit a picture of the pothole and uh, the area, and you have to get a response within a couple of days. And I'll even go one step further. You can actually see the progress of potholes being repaired. Our roads are in horrible condition. Why? can't answer that. Right. I mean, can, it can't be... Just from, you know, two bad snowstorms, it can't be. But that's a bigger topic, and unfortunately, I don't, right. I don't have the answer <laughs> for that. Um, so, you know, definitely utilize uh, the resources that are available to you. SEMCO holds their meetings uh, once a month. Um, they're usually, I think, on the second or third Tuesday. Um, and But you can uh, go on to... Semco, yeah. um, I believe that they have a calendar. Uh, I also believe the Chamber of Commerce has their calendar as well, um, which leads me into always remember shop local, keep right. everything in your backyard. You're helping yourself. All right, all right, very good. Did I miss anything? Hmm. I think we covered everything. Covered everything. I think, I think we did. All right, but I'm sure there's going to be more. There, I'm sure there will be more. I'm sure you'll be on top of it. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, you know, what you were, you, you know, the whole purpose of what we're doing here on the Helping Hands podcast is to spotlight these good things. There's so many, you know, people are so quick to jump to the negative and you turn on the news and there's negative, 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 because that's, mm -hmm. I don't know, we're just, I don't know, drawn to that. We look, have to look at the train wreck. Um, but there mm -hmm. is so much good, like when you say that you put a call out for, uh, you know, food and supplies for our veterans mm -hmm. um, and everybody runs to that. Um, and and that needs to be spotlighted, and that needs to be yes. you know be be shined mm -hmm. on. So I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. Um, and we're going to put any links and everything mm -hmm. on, on the uh, on the on the uh, bottom in comments. So if you need to get in touch with anyone, how you can get involved, we'll be uh, we'll, we'll put all the links on there. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Eileen. You're welcome. And, thank uh, you. Keep uh, keep fighting. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thanks. <laughs>